All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're here. We're finally here. My neck hurt. We're finally here. NFL playoffs. Wild card. We're, we're, we're all right here. Ah, so let's get to talking about the Detroit Lions and the LA Rams. Long, long ago in a faraway land, the Detroit Lions, they, they, hey, they just switched owners. They fire Matt Patricia, Bob Quinn, all the scrubs that basically ruined our franchise from Jim Caldwell. Um, Matthew Stafford just is not, is not able to win with the guys and the team that's put together because they're always putting him in such a bad position to succeed. This is a Hall of Fame quarterback. and I, He's better than Eli Manning, and you can't tell me he's not. I'll take him over Ben Roethlisberger any day too, but this is a Hall of Fame quarterback who is not being given the flowers that he truly deserves. This is a Hall of Fame quarterback that deserves nothing but the world because the organization of the Detroit Lions screwed him and Megatron over. With that being said, they need a restart. The the LA Rams, you know, they're coming off of soup. They're coming off of a Super Bowl. Their uh, premier number one pick quarterback, he's not playing well at all. And there's just not much going on between him and McVay. Like, they're just, it's not clicking anymore. So they decide to make a trade. And Matthew Stafford goes to the Rams. And Jared Goff and a bunch of first round picks comes to Detroit. And fast forward to today. In six days, the Detroit Lions will be hosting our first playoff game ever in Ford Field and this will be the first playoff game that's being hosted by the Detroit Lions in general in over 30 years and the person that we are facing that could possibly upset us is Matthew Stafford himself his first playoff game in Ford Field we I believe if I read the numbers correctly, the Detroit Lions in passing offense is the number two passing offense in the NFL, and we are the number six rushing offense in the NFL. However, I believe we lead the league in rushing touchdowns, while the Rams are a number 10 team in the NFL in passing offense, and they are number, I believe, it was 11 in rushing offense so they're not top five but they're they're top 10 and outside of top 10 you know this is the playoffs now um this is a team that we are facing that is that is laced with good wide receiver talent they have puka nakua they have uh who just broke the rookie record because thank you matthew stafford um they've got cooper cup who broke the wide receiver record thank you matthew stafford um, and then they've got some sneaky guys um, on um, Robinson, I believe his name is. Um, they've got Kyron Williams. He's sneaky as well. I, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to it. But they got Kyron Williams, um, and that's their offense. You know, their offensive line is has not done pretty bad at all this year. They've really stepped it up, and and they've become a better offensive line because at first. When Whitworth had retired, they were they were just a piece of wet paper, to be honest. But now um, they're not they're not pretty bad. Um, look at the Detroit Lions offense. The Detroit Lions, you have rookie studs all over the field. You've got uh, Jameer Gibbs, you know, breaking franchise records. Sam Laporta, he may or may not be playing this weekend because of his hyperextended knee and bone bruise. You've got, obviously, the Pro Bowl snub, Amon Ross St. Brown, a wide receiver who has over 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. You've got David Montgomery from the Chicago Bears, who is now the veteran back, the, the dynamic back that we wish that Jamal Williams could have been, but he wasn't, so that's why Jamal's not here anymore. But he has 10 touchdowns himself. Laporta, the Lions are the second team in NFL history to have four different players have 10 touchdowns um and that the first team was the 2013 broncos with peyton manning um and then we have top five if not top two or one offensive lines in the nfl guaranteed we're top three um 
two and one, that's always up for debate. I'm I, I'm not really worried about it as long as your top three ain't as cool because a lot of offensive lines, most of the offensive lines in this league are not good. Um, <clears throat> and that's our offense. Go to the Rams defense. The greatest defensive player of all time in my book, Aaron Donald, is on is leading that defense. Um, they've got they've got some studs they've got some studs there too. They've got some studs there. Um, to be honest, I don't know much else about their defense. I just know they got 15 takeaways on the season, interceptions and uh, fumbles. The Detroit Lions have gotten 27 takeaways on the season. Our differential is zero and theirs is negative three. So we slightly lead them in the takeaway battle. Um, and then even with our defense, our defense, I mean, both defenses are, are kind of mediocre. They're kind, they're both kind of mediocre. However, the only thing is the Detroit Lions are the Detroit Lions are the number two uh, run-stopping defense in the NFL. So, what I have to say about this matchup and what's clear about this matchup, this matchup is going to be a shootout. I say it's going to be a shootout because, in my mind, worst-case scenario, Matthew Stafford does Matthew Stafford things, put the team on his back to try to will them to a win. We stop Kyron Williams. He's not going to do much. He may have a touchdown. He may. I'm, I'm, he may have a touchdown, but rushing the ball, I don't. I believe we can. I believe we can sew it up well. It's just, I believe it's going to get to a point in the game where we're going to start letting the rushing go because of how well Matthew Stafford is going to be flinging that ball to Cooper and Puka. Um, and on our side of the ball, I, I I definitely don't believe that they're gonna stop us. Uh, Aaron Donald sack, sure, I believe it. I would I would not be surprised if you told me Aaron Donald may have two sacks. He's, he's Aaron Donald. He's a game wrecker. Um, but again, that's a, we have one of the best offensive lines in football, if not the best offensive line in football, which is gonna be a very interesting matchup. The name of the game is. Keep scoring, get takeaways. I would love for us to be able to stop Matthew Stafford in his tracks. I would love for us to be able to get three and outs. But with this defense, I don't know if that's going to be a thing. Now, sure, Brian Branch, in this, as, a, as a slot corner, I believe the stat was he's uh, second best in uh, it's some sort of stat. You can look it up. Brian Branch is uh, second best. And so he's very, he's very 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 much needed even though as you've watched the games all season brian he's a, he's still a rookie for him to be playing at the level he's playing at is unheard of i need to see jack campbell really step it up i need anzalone to play like the top 10 linebacker that he's played like all season which is still unbelievable to me um i don't know who this I know most. I know almost everybody on this Lions team except this Vildor guy. I've never seen him before a few weeks ago, and I just don't see. I don't see. I don't. I, I don't know. We've had some costly plays with him, and I'm very concerned about it. But I believe this Detroit Lions team can honestly get it done. I believe it's going to be a shootout on Sunday. It's going to be very cringy for me to watch. I'm already just bracing myself, but I feel like we can get the job done. But to be honest, in my mind of things, if the Detroit Lions can just play the brand new Detroit Lions style of football, I feel like we can win this game. A slow, methodical, just punch them in the mouth, run it down their throat, put the hat on their ass type of deal. You know, I just believe if we can get David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs going, I feel like we'll have this game locked up. I want us to be able to try to keep the game to as least of a shootout as possible. I want us to try. I want I want to try to be able to just keep that pace, win the time of possession. Do not let Matthew Stafford get the ball under. <laughs> uh, the name of the game is the Detroit Lions need the last possession of the game because I still believe Matthew Stafford is a quarterback who in my time as a Detroit Lions fan, if the Lions were guaranteed 
under we were behind by no more maybe maybe no more than two touchdowns Matthew Stafford can get it done he he's a game changer he's a hall of fame quarterback I believe Matthew Stafford can get it done but at the end of the day he's the enemy coming into the Lions den he's he's coming into the den he's coming into Ford Field as an enemy I will cheer for Matthew Stafford and I will boo for Matthew Stafford I I the Ram, the Rams I've I've been a secondary fan of the Rams because I'm a sec because I'm a I'm a Matthew Stafford fan and I'm a believer in what he does. But at the end of the day, I feel like if we're able to control the time of possession, get our runners going, slow the pace of the game down, I really believe we can pull this game out. We, I really believe we can pull this game out. Um Cam Sutton, he he had a really hard time with CeeDee Lamb when he played. So hopefully we can get that going. But again, on the defensive on the defensive side of the ball, I feel like the key to winning this game on either side is takeaways, fumbles, interceptions. Aaron Donald getting in there, splitting a the double team, getting a sack. You know, uh, C.J. Gardner Johnson uh, getting in there and getting an interception. Ife, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying it's just a lot. It's it, there. We have a we have we have guys. We honestly have guys, but our front seven really needs to step it up. Our front seven has to be there. We have to answer the call. Aiden Hutchinson, I haven't even mentioned Aiden because we have not been able to get pressure like we want. We haven't, well, we're getting pressure. We're not able to get to the quarterback like we want to because Aiden is just, they're focusing all of their attention on Aiden and he's not Aaron Donald. He's not going to be able to split every, he's not Aaron Donald or Miles Garrett gonna just be able to split apart double, double and triple teams. You know, and he's still like he's still young. He's still building that muscle. He's still getting the size on him. He's only a sophomore. Uh, it's just, it's a very nerve wracking game, and I want to know what y'all think about it because it's it's gonna be huge. I'm excited. I'm coming back home. I'm I'm gonna I'm going to the game. I'm I'm. This is I feel like this is the most important game in my lifetime as a Detroit Lions fan. I'm 26 years old. I was born in 97. I honestly feel like this right here is the most important game in the Lions history that I can ever think of because it's the first home playoff game in over 30 years. This is the first playoff game in Ford Field. The city is going to come alive. The decibels is just going to be insane. It's just going to be such a beautiful sight. And I want to know what y'all think about it. It's time. It's time to play the game. You know, it's time to get started. It's time to get revved up. The Lions are here and I'm excited. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to see what we do, man. It's just, I'm a hometown kid, man. You know, I'm a hometown kid. You see that the Super Bowl for that Super Bowl 40, Michigan. I was there. It was a great time. I just believe it's our. I just believe it's our time. I believe we can march. We're we're hosting the NFL draft. I believe the NFL champions should be hosting the NFL draft, and that is exactly what I see the Detroit Lions doing. I see us. I honestly see us beating the Rams. I see the Cowboys then uh, hosting a home game against the Lions and we get our revenge against them. I see the 49ers, hopefully they don't screw up. I would love for the 49ers to go to the ch to the uh, NFC Championship so we can face them, so we can knock them in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? We can put their hat in the dirt. I, there's other words, but I can't say that. Uh, you know? Uh, and then just go to the Super Bowl and face whoever it is we're facing. I would love for it to be Lamar Jackson so we can get revenge on him and Justin Tucker too. And that would cap off the most perfect season in Detroit Lions history. But life doesn't work that way. Um, there's always twists and turns. The Packers could win. Who knows? Uh, they could win their game, I'm saying, against uh, the Cowboys, who the head coach is Mike McCarthy. He was the coach for the Packers. And it's a lot It's a lot of NFL script-laced games going on this weekend. The Cleveland Browns are facing off against Deshaun Watson's old team, the Houston Texans. This time, I will be rooting for the Houston Texans because... 
I want CJ Stroud to ball. I believed in him. I don't care if he's from the if if he was a part of the enemy. I believed in his game. I felt like he was, should have been number one over Bryce Young. It is what it is. But let me know what y'all thinking in the comment section. It's just gonna be a great time. It's gonna be a great experience with the Detroit Lions, and I'm excited to see where I'm excited to see where this game goes. I'm excited and terrified at the same time. You know, it's time to come home. It's time to represent. It's time for the city to get up. You know, celebrate. Everybody should be celebrating all week, starting in two hours. Starting in two hours, it's gonna be a celebration because Michigan is facing Washington and. If Michigan, when Michigan wins the national championship, this is going to get the ball rolling. The city's going to get pumped. We're, we're celebrating for Michigan. We're anticipating beating Matthew Stafford. Aiden Hutchinson is going to, is going to become unglued in the game. It's going to be a great time. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, uh, become one of the players in the palace. And I'm going to catch y'all later. Peace out.